Who is Sean Thomas? What do you do? Are there particular types of businesses that you're supporting at the moment with that? Do you think this is something that's very peculiar to tech businesses where you might have a founder that is very product focused? <laughs> Welcome to the JodPod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, authors, and coaches. Today, we are joined by Sean Thomas, founder of Integro Sales Solutions. Great to have you with us today, Sean. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've just abbreviated to Integro Sales because it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> It is. Okay, Integro Sales, we can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, for those of us who don't know who you are, Sean, who is Sean Thomas? What do you do? Um, well, you've um, highlighted that I am the founder of Integro Sales and um, I effectively a sales consultant for manufacturers and software development companies. So just to give you a bit of a background, um, over the course of my career, I've worked with many businesses developing growth strategies to help them scale and the aim is to deliver at least 10 times the return on investment. Um, I've also contributed a chapter to Sales Genius Volume 2 which was an Amazon bestseller so really excited about that and in a nutshell it's about developing growth programs to share best practices and useful resources to enable many more businesses to scale and grow sustainably. So it's about creating the right message for the right person at the right time um, to get sales conversations started, um, to increase customer conversions, and more importantly, improve customer retentions because um, it's the customers coming back that's going to really help your business scale going forward. Wonderful. And are there particular types of businesses that you're supporting at the moment with that? Yeah, it's 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 predominantly um, all sides of kind of like sort of tech tech business. You know, I've tech businesses like more more. Uh, more likely to be, you know, people starting out because, you know, they tend to be very technically minded. They tend to be sort of the technicians within their business. So they don't really understand the whole um, bio psychology and how to engage with customers and get conversations started. So it's about sort of like trying to develop a strategy for them and an outreach um, program. And, it, you know, it might be worth at this point mentioning uh, there is a structure that I have put in place to enable that. Um, it's around the GROWS methodology because we're growing our business. And so that really stands for um, developing the groundwork and getting the infrastructure right, because a lot of businesses overlook that. And that is, if you don't get that right, then it affects the rest of the sales campaign. You want to work on your reach, how you can reach out to your potential customers, those who will really benefit from what you're doing. Um, and then once you've you know, done your outreach, then what opportunities does that present for you? And how do you convert those opportunities into wins and once you've got, once you've gone through the first iteration of doing that, then how do you scale? It's about um, it's about sales acceleration at that point. Wonderful. And do you, how does that work? Do you coach people to do this, or do you do this with, you know, alongside a business that you're you're consulting with? Um, it's predominantly um, a done with you. Um, you know, there are different frameworks. Obviously, it depends on what budgets um, that businesses have got in place. So, um, for instance, this person um, a couple of years ago I was working with um, just really knew coming out of their um, corporate business and wanted to set up on their own and obviously the budget was tight. So I did sort of like put a framework, you know, a do-it-yourself um, solution for that. But more commonly than it's, it's a done with you. So it's about having the framework, agreeing the strategy, you know, who's your customer and all of that side of things, how we're going to reach out to them and then set up the accountability levels, and I can hold their hands through that. But then at the very, you know, if, if they want to go on board, um, where I'm looking to really develop, and what I have, where, where I really started doing this was doing the campaigns on their behalf. So um, actually practicing what I'm preaching, do, you know, I started this from freelancing in sales and realizing that um, a lot of businesses weren't getting the infrastructure right in the first place. So, so it, it, it just depends on how immersive they want their involvement, what kind of budget, their growth aspirations, all of those come into play depending, um, and that determines how the relationship I have with them going forward. Okay, okay. And, and do you think this is something that's very peculiar to tech businesses where you might have a founder that is very product focused and maybe, you know, is very good technically but hasn't had the exposure to a, uh, you know, a sales life cycle? Uh, before and they, they need some support. 
No, no, no. It's um, it's, it's any business. It's any business where you are the technician in your business. So, fun, you know, it could be um, if you're in the professional services, you're an accountant, you're you're in a financial, you're 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 a solicitor. Um, anyone who's a practitioner that wants to set up on their own and have got the aspirations to scale. And but the reason why I'm working more with technical businesses is because um, in my career. I've worked for a software development company back in my full-time employed days. Um, I've worked in the corporate sector. Um, you know, Shell, you can say that's a manufacturing company. So it's a different kind of, it's a different kind of sale. It's um, a different thought process, um, and that's and it's more of a specialism of mine to work with those customers. Not to say that it, I can't apply it to other sectors, but I'd rather really focus on those industries because that's where I really think I can add value. Wonderful. That's awesome. You, you mentioned uh, that you used to work corporate, uh, yep. and now and now obviously you're running your own business. What something uh -huh. that we're trying to do on the job pod is inspire other people to step out of their comfort zones and, and make that 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 transition. C can you remember wh whether or not you'd always wanted to be an entrepreneur, or whether or not this is something that's a recent no, thing? No, 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 no. I, I am a very reluctant entrepreneur. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> Um, like you know, I, I worked um, at you know the awesome company Shell. It was a really good training um, basis for me. Um, and um, however, I was there some time, and I, I'm not um, you know it, it it wasn't it didn't feel it didn't meet my sort of purpose needs to do that. So I always knew I was going to do something else. But whether or not that was for myself is debatable. So um, yeah, it's, it's basically you know after the financial crash, there wasn't a lot of opportunities in terms of business development. Um, I was getting kind of entry level roles or offers, so I thought, you know, that you know, I didn't, I didn't want to start again in my career. So I was just looking, hustling, um, finding a way forward to do that. And I've, I've, I had a couple of other ventures. I, I ran my own pub business for a couple of years. Um, yeah, it, which, which was really exciting. And you know, and, and it's and it's gone from being completely corporate to being completely on your own, sort of in, in a very small business. And also, I also tried e-commerce, and you know, one venture worked, one venture didn't learned huge amounts doing both and and i thought okay so um let's put that into something that's going to be of value to anyone i want to work with but the beauty of what i do is that i work with so many fantastic organizations you know it's just inspiring to know what's out there and um yeah you know i really you know i although i do did it reluctantly i'm enjoying it massively yeah i i i, I it's interesting to hear why people become entrepreneurs you know business owners for themselves and uh, sometimes, you know, circumstance made, makes you do it. Sometimes it's people are bought, born into it. Um, yeah. But there is, you know, it's, it's nice to see that there's a different way ar around mm. it. I'm, I'm wondering, do you remember uh, your your very first customer as a as an entrepreneur? Um, oh, I'll be honest with you, no, because <laughs> like it sounds, it's, it's it's an awful answer to give because um, you know when I was freelancing. Um, I, when I was freelancing, I was, um, you know, sort of a lot of them would typically be in the digital space and it was yeah. kind of very similar, very similar offers. So it's, you know, that sort of like couple of years really does all sort of like merge into one. But, ah, tell a lie. Um, there was one business I I did do some work for. I was basically outsourcing to that. They were doing um, outsourced business development, but I was, I was working under their umbrella brand and, um, and it's for a friend I met through networking and, you know, so she, she, you know, brilliant, brilliant, um, brilliant lady. And, you know, and I was doing some campaigns for them, which was, you know, which was in, in a number of sectors. And, and that was just, um, uh, yeah, that was, that was really special because it was like kind of my first sort of, pe you know, first time really working for myself in, in that yeah. space. Yeah. I just think it's really powerful to understand how people got their first customers because a lot of people listening, and I've seen this a lot, actually, a lot of people have ideas, they build websites, mm. they do social media, but they don't think about that first customer, you know, getting that first pound or dollar in through the door is, is so important. Uh, and, you know, Absolutely. leveraging your network to win consultancy work whilst you're building something, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it all adds up and it, it helps build your, build your confidence. So um, thanks for sharing uh, about that, Sean. So do, do you want to expand a little bit about what you're what you're doing now, you know, the kind of kind of clients that you're that you're working with. Um, at the moment, you know, I'm I'm, I'm getting some sort of like um, projects on board with, um, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's tech, tech software development companies. So it's mm. like, um, obviously we're sort of coming out of a pandemic, and what's been great at this time, yeah, you know, sort of 
yeah, touch, you know, dare I say touch wood, um, that, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are leaving, you know, whether it's reluctantly or whether it's um, an, an opportunity, people are setting up in business and um, that's presented opportunity for, for, for consultants like me to really help them to hold their hand through their sort of like growth phase. So those are kind of the campaigns I have been involved and, and I'll right. con um, continue to deliver on. But then um, as, you know, as, as I'm promoting myself and with my marketing, because, you know, I'm basically... Um, everything I profess to my clients, I'm doing exactly, I'm going on the same journey as themselves. And, um, you know, I think the hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do is actually take, practice what they preach. And that's, that's something I'm learning myself. And that's, that's, that's true in so many professions. Yeah. Uh, it really, it really is. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just, and as I'm doing that, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting, whereas, you know, I, I've been doing a lot of knocking on doors and I'm, I'm finding that I'm getting people coming to me. Um, mm. And they're sort of like not, and they're kind of a bit more established um, businesses, which is which is exciting because that's another another different skill set. Yeah. And um, but that but that's the way it goes in business. You have to start. You have to get started and start somewhere. Yeah. And, and what with, with the people that are reaching out to you? I'm just thinking if people are, li are listening to this this podcast or watching this podcast, what's the kind of internal monologue of the problems and pains? That they're feeling right now that would make it a no-brainer for them to you know reach out and at least have a conversation with you um well the pay, you know it's, it's, it's people who you know really really sort of developing exciting so you know they, they basically you know created a few passion projects and want to go to market with it but they don't really know where to get started they're like um you know they're developing their businesses um there's all kinds of business models and you know no, no matter what books you read and um you know to webinar sessions you go to um you know there's some people who create product and then launch and there's others who launch and then create a product so whatever paradigm you're going through but the ones typically are the ones who like to sort of you know basically know that you know they've got a product but they don't know where to get started and that's mm. and that's the fundamental um, pain point if or even if they um working hard you know working well in one market but want to extend into another market um i've been, I've been talking to a to, to a swedish i i um, tech business who is looking to develop in the UK. Um, I'm talking to a South African tech business that wants to reach into the UK, and uh, um, so it's it's basically anyone looking to sort of go out of their what of their current um, comfort zone in terms of their sales and marketing. And those are people who I'm speaking with at the moment, or or people who know that they need to um, if they're um, if they've been using referrals and um, introductions, but that's not really quite hitting the mark in terms of the revenue projections. Anything yeah. like that who needs to scale. Wonderful. That's uh, that's great, Sean. I'm you know really interested to see how things go coming out of the you know the lockdown and pandemic to see how things go uh, with with that business. Are you happy to answer some quick fire questions? Love to answer some quick fire questions. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Love it. Uh, what uh, what's your favourite app or SaaS product? Um, okay, so um, I would say there's there's a couple. I use. I, I can't get away with this podcast without saying a CRM. You know, you've got to have a CRM or some kind of organized organization tool. But um, programs, I love Canva because I'm producing a lot of content and brochures and sales collateral. Um, Canva is one for me. I just find that so easy to use and professional looking. Canva is quickly becoming the unofficial sponsor of the podcast. Oh, uh, right. What? Uh, well, I mean, everyone's mentioning Canva. Oh, uh, what, well what's, what, C what CRM do you use, Sean? Um, I am a HubSpot partner, so that is my tool of choice. Um, you know, I will work with other CRMs, but I do get asked for recommendations quite a lot, and that's what I normally suggest. Wonderful, great recommendation. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. It's free to free to start with as well, isn't it? If you're a it's free. new, uh, yes, new 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 entrepreneur uh, out there, uh, what's your most recommended book? Oh man. Um, I'm going to recommend authors because they do some great books, if that's all right. Is that because I'm going to go against sales, but, but okay. So if I was to name, I love Malcolm Gladwell. I, I find Tipping Point awesome because it helps you to think outside conventional wisdom as to what really is going on when people make decisions. Because in terms of buying, it's not always the obvious. The, the obvious aren't always the answers. So it's, it's that kind of thing. That, that's why I love, love him as an author. Tipping Point is is you know, an incredible, incredible book. Tipping point, I think, if you're an entrepreneur and understanding 
how tipping points happen, I think is really key, especially if you're trying to build an audience. Any books like that, I absolutely love because it just, it, you know, it's, it's about psychology and I love psychology. Yeah, really fantastic. Great recommendations. Thanks for that, Sean. Um, who's your favourite YouTuber or podcaster? Um, okay, uh, I don't, oh, this is, this is a confessional. It's, it's a bit hard for me to say, but if I was to pick a name, Louis Theroux would be what would be mine. Man. <laughs> These are really random. I'm not really picking necessary people in my field. I like going outside of my field. And the reason why I like Louis Theroux is because he's great at unearthing the weird and um, getting to the truth. So, um, yeah, I think those are two great characteristics. I, I do like his uh, unarming style, uh, most, yes. most definitely. He's, a, he's got a very uh, unique uh, characteristic. Who's, a, who's an up-and-comer then? Who's someone that we should be keeping an eye on as a future... Oh superstar musk bezos huffington type person um if i was to if if i was if, if i had an inkling if i had a hunch on someone i i don't think i'd be involved in sharing that information i'll be like no it's all busy just try and get myself involved no i'm teasing i'm teasing of course um i've um no I, I'll, I'll be honest i don't i find that one really hard to answer but the um but having conversations in my area, um, there's a lot of great te um, apps that are being developed and there's going to be some, um, for instance, you know, I hope it's going to be someone that's homegrown um, because there's a lot of really, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of fascinating British um, entrepreneurs and, 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 and innovators and um, something that really addresses something fundamental. I, you know, I have had inkling that there's someone developing an app around um, the, the food waste problem and, and addressing that. So I just, you know, if there was is to be someone, then I'd like it to be in that in that area. There are some really interesting UK-based entrepreneurs that are, are coming through um, at the moment. Uh, I know an old boss of mine uh, is the uh, co-CEO of Sonovate, which is a fintech from Wales that's coming out that is teetering on a billion dollar billion pound valuation which is really interesting so uh yeah. but you know british entrepreneurs yeah awesome Absolutely. um thanks for that and sean where's the best people place for people to find you and interact with you online um connect with me on linkedin like if you like you know if you like what you're hearing um find me on linkedin and i'm happy to connect with you and um no, the obvious place will be on my website. Um, everything that I share on social media will find its way on my website. So those probably will be the first places to do that. Wonderful. Thanks, Sean. There we have it. Sean Thomas is the founder of Integro Sales, who scales manufacturing and software development companies profitably and sustainably. Uh, she got her first customer through networking and doing some outsourced BD work. Very useful uh, example for anybody that's out there starting their own business. App that she recommends is uh, HubSpot. She's a HubSpot partner for your CRM and for your content. Have a look at Canva. Uh, I'm sure you've used Canva or had a look at Canva yourself. Reading wise, she likes intellectual, intellectually stimulating titles like Tipping Point. Uh, we'll put some links to those in the show notes so people can look at those. And she loves listening to Louis Theroux's very unique interview uh, style. Uh, for the future, we should be keeping an eye out on British entrepreneurs. Uh, there's lots of tech, fintech entrepreneurs coming through in the UK at the moment um, that we should be keeping an eye out for. And contact wise, you know, head over to LinkedIn, contact Sean, uh, just type her name in the search box there, that's Sean Thomas, that's S-I-A-N-T-H-O-M-A-S. Uh, she'll pop up and you can send an invite. I'm sure she'll be very happy to connect with you. And her e and her oh, and her website is uh, integrosales.co.uk. That's I N T E G R O W S A L E S dot co dot uk. Sean, thank you for joining us today on the Jod Pod. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today on the Jod Pod for today's interview with Sean to ensure you don't miss out on any of these interviews please be sure to play the YouTube game subscribe like hit the bell and why don't you ask Sean a question about sales and about marketing your business that you've just come up with drop a question down below 
it's uh, a nice thing to do for the video and you never know you might get some pearls of wisdom thrown your way hopefully you've been inspired by what sean's been talking about today and that you can step out of your own comfort zone and create your own business please go and build something and inspire the next generation thanks for joining us today on the jod pod If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on the Jod Pod? More inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders, and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.